This is August 24th, 2018. We are in Bedford, Massachusetts at the Edith North Rogers Memorial Veterans Hospital. And this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's <clears throat> Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Jim Ramsey. Our camera person is Maureen Sullivan. And we're very privileged uh, to have with us today Arnold Eugene Bopp. Welcome, Arnold. Thank you. Nice to have, nice to be with well, you today. I hope I can do some good. Some you will do benefit. some good. I know it. Uh, may I ask uh, when you were born? I was born in 19, uh, November 15th, 1933. And where? In in, uh, on, on a farm in Wisconsin, on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. Dairy farm. What, what was the closest town? Uh, the closest town was Elma Center, and that had 450 people, most of them retired farmers. Did you say Lucerne? Pardon? What, what was the name of the town? Elma Center. Okay. A-L-M-A. Center. C-E-N-T-E-R. Got it. Got it. Got it. 450 people. Yeah, on the average. On, on the average. <laughs> I see. I see. And you, uh, were you part of a large family? No, I had one sister who was five years older than me. Okay. So she graduated from high school when I started high school. Okay, okay, okay. So you grew up on the, what was it like growing up on a farm? Oh, it's great. You know, I would, I can remember having a good time in the sandbox, which was, a, and it wasn't a box, it was a regular sand pit, <laughs> up about a little ways from the house, up on the road, on the side of the road. And I used to play there with my toys. I and see. once in a while, my sister would come up and play, and I, I enjoyed that so much when she came. Great. Yeah. Did, and you must have worked on the farm, I would guess. Oh, yeah. So I worked on the farm for uh, until I graduated from high school. Wow. Okay. And we milked, we milked uh, I think it was around 10, 10 head of cows by hand from the time I was six until I graduated from high school. And you had to milk them every day? Milk them twice a day. Twice a day? Yeah. Around seven in the morning and uh, five at night. That's a lot of milk. In the afternoon, yes. That was a, that was our living. On top of that, we grew grain, corn, and uh, wheat to feed the cattle. Nice. So they would produce the milk. And uh, I I milked my hand until twelve on uh, on the twelfth. Uh, on, when I graduated from high school, mm -hmm. and he, about three or four days, maybe a week, no, in August, after that, I came into the service. Okay. And okay. that's when my dad bought a milking machine for the first time. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Perfect. He, he didn't do it until I left. <laughs> well, he had a milking machine, right? No, you. he didn't. You. Yeah, I was a milk machine, and so was my mother and my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So you I went up there, milk on my hand. My fingers still do really the same thing. Top, wow. top finger. So you went to school. Uh, how uh, how far away was your school from well, your? Well, the fir first fir the first three years or four years was about two, a mile, mile and a half. And I walked both ways. And it was from first grade to the fourth. And I was the only one in class. Although there was somebody in all the classes, one through eight. Oh, it was one one But one I was the out? only person in class. And I went three years and four years. And I said, well, I'm not going to go out and play by myself every day. So I, put, I told them to put me back one grade. So I started with in the third grade the second year. Okay. So and, you could have classmates. And I had four or five classmates. 
So this was a one-room schoolhouse? One-room schoolhouse, one teacher, and eight grades. <clears throat> wow. Along with a big pot belly stove and a sheet of metal around it. And they cut wood and they had a woodshed and a, and a pump to have water, <clears throat> to bring water in for drinking. So then you went to high school. Yes, I uh, went to high school and they had, it was still, <coughs> we had we had sold, Dad had rented this farm for 13 years. And then he wanted to buy it and, and, and the guy wouldn't sell it to him. So he found an 80 acre farm next to the home place, which was a homestead. And uh, that was his, where Dad was born. Anyway, we got, he bought this house with a brick house on it and a big barn. And he had one cow that he could take after the 12 that we had milking all the time. Mm, mm. So he was able to go out and buy four or five other cows and we made a herd. Yeah. Four or five hundred cows? No, no. Four, four or five, five cows. Four or five cows, yeah. And uh, that, then I was in high school and the bus stopped outside the driveway and I had to go another 30, 40 miles picking up other kids and then come back. But I was the first one off. 30 or 40 miles? Yes. It was all the way around the country, cut side, picking up kids from North Branch to another county and then back into Elma Center where the high school was. Wow. Yeah. Where, where we bought when Dad bought this 80-acre farm, it was probably, oh, I'll say uh, 15 miles. And then it, it, I walked across the field to school because it was nearer than walking around. Got it. And I walked over all the, and that's, that was North Branch. And then when I graduated from North Branch in the eighth, and after the eighth grade, then a bus came around at school time and brought, I had to go around all the counties and, and pick up a bus load of kids, all farmers, and then come back into town and dump us off at the, at the school, high school. Wow. And the high school, was the only one that was in Elma Center in the vicinity. <clears throat> there was Maryland and, and another town, I'll think of the name of it later, but all of those kids that were old enough came to our high school. Everybody that was in, was able to, or graduated and were coming to you know, those three towns all went to the same school. So we got to know a lot of people outside of where we lived, right. you know. So after you went to high school, I think you said you decided you wanted to go, you wanted to enlist. No, it, 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 was, in, it was in August, but I was, I was delivering, I was hauling milk at the time. I was picking up all the milk from the farmers with a big truck. And I got into Elma Center and they have a cheese factory. So I was unloading these cans. And three guys, Donald Vinson, Donald Starter, and there was another Donald there. And I, anyway, he, uh, I don't want to break it a minute. <clears throat> Donald Starter, Donald Vinson, and Donald Johnson, and I said, they were walking down the road where, where I was working, and I said, what are you guys doing? He said, we're going to Minneapolis, and we're going to join the Army because they have a new thing going called the Army Security Agency. And he said, why don't you come with us? And I decided right there and then to go with them. But I went, they weren't leaving that day a couple of days later, but I was able to go home and 
tell my folks that I was going to the service. And then we came back, and the day we went, we hit the, um, in Maryland, we picked up the 400, which is a train that travels between uh, uh, Chicago and Minneapolis, and that's its route. That's the only route it takes. And it's on the 400. You get on it, and it very seldom stops along the way. Mm -hmm. It's a train that goes from Minneapolis to Chicago. And uh, we got up there, and uh, they were interviewing us. And we were filling out all the questionnaires to get into the service. And along with, the, along with that, they got the question to me about if I'd ever been to jail, and I said no. And then after this was all over with, I walked outside and I said, I lied. <laughs> so I went back and I told them, I said, you know, I lied. I've been in jail and this is what happened. My cousin and I were in the car and the people that were, two, two boys that were in the back jumped out and started to take the air out of the tires that were on all the cars that were on the street. Mm. And then we went around the block a little bit, and I said, yeah, we got to get out of here. But they jumped out again, and at that time, two officers came. And then they went, hit them with a fist, and then they put them in the car, and then they got us, and they weren't of age. So they turned around and let them loose. And Earl and I, we sat in the car and did nothing. <laughs> Took the rap for it. Imagine that. Anyway, we were stayed at, we, Earl and I stayed in jail. And the next morning, they took us down to the fire station, and that's where the judge was. He was a volunteer. Apparently, he was a volunteer fireman. Anyway, we set on some boxes and inner tube and, and tires. And they said, are you guilty? And both of us said, yes, we're guilty. I mean, we these were people that were, we should have been watching out for. Right. And, and, uh, and so they fined us $75, and we stayed the rest of the day in jail. And got, they, my uncle, my cousin's father, came down and, and paid the fine and took us out. So once you once you confess this uh, to the recruiter, what did he do? Well, then it was it was several a year or so later that I got to talk with a, the a family on a farm that was a few miles from us, and I said, "Did you ever have any Secret Service agents come and ask you questions?" And he said, "Yes," and I said, "Well, what did they talk about?" He said, "They asked one question." What did they think we spent in the jail for? And they all said they were just there. They didn't do anything, but they were there, and they become because the other ones weren't uh, weren't, weren't of age. So they basically right. confirmed your story. Right, we confirmed the story. They, so that, I guess you were okay. Oh yeah, we're all right because they 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 accepted us. He accepted me, and we became the people that went to back to Fort Devens. And Fort Devens said, well, we got to go to basic training before we give you our training. So we went to Fort Riley, Kansas for eight weeks of ba basic training. Okay. Then came back to Fort Devens and went to school. I went to school for... Uh, or, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the name, a commissary work. It was a uh, something to do with uh, sending messages and stuff like a commissary. Mm -hmm. A com center. Teletype? Teletype. Right. Yeah. Teletype, uh, uh, teletype uh, operator. And I had taken uh, uh, typing in school, 
Okay. So I had that taken care of. I could run the teletype, except I have to learn where the carriage return line feed was. That's the only thing I had to learn. Other so, than that, I was able to type all the way. So the teletype operator, and this again, this was with the Army Security Agency. Right, right. And is this like a type, uh, what, what do you, is this like typing a well, telegram I, type of thing or? Well, no, I, I, I can't go into any of the, what I've done. Okay. All I did was I was a teletype operator. Teletype operator. And uh, I stayed in the service doing that for the next two and a half years, you know, after going through basic and then they sent me to Alaska. Okay. And I w worked in Alaska as a teletype operator for uh, for the next till till the end of my term. And where where in Alaska were you? Then I, I came out and got discharged. And where I where where in Alaska? Uh, Fort Richardson. Fort Richardson. Yeah, right outside of. Uh, hmm. Anchorage? Anchorage, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So that, that's where I was all the time. I worked in a building that no windows and, and a steel door to get in. Basically a classified yeah, operation. Yeah, complete. Right. So that, that, I stayed, I did that for the rest of that period of time that I was in the service. And then I got discharged up there. And up there, and we had a car, and we drove the Alcan down all the way to Elma Center for another. Then I stayed out for a year, and then stayed I stayed out of the service. Yeah, and I was I wasn't doing anything, and I was working for a lumber company, and it wasn't uh, I wasn't getting any promotions, and I wouldn't get any so. I decided, well, maybe I should go back to the service. Mm -hmm. And I did. That was around, around September, August, somewhere in there at that time. And uh, then they, I went for, uh, a, to rehabilitate myself in, in the, what I was doing the last three years. And they sent me to, school to <coughs> renew my knowledge of what I was doing. And then uh, they gave me orders after that to go to Berlin. Now what was your rank at the time? I was a, uh, I was a spec four at that time. Spec four. Right. <coughs> and then when I got to Berlin, we worked out of uh, on, uh, on a runway, or not on a runway, but one of the buildings that had been bombed, and we were at the end of the runway because the building, the room they were in was, was safe, and it wasn't bombed, it wasn't ruined. So we, we set up our operation there, and that's where I went. That was at there. I got up there just as the, uh, I, I had this all set up. Uh, uh, the planes were coming in for the... Oh, the airlift? The airlift. And they were just ending. The Berlin airlift. There. Yeah. Now, the airlift there was one bringing all the food in because they, the Russians had sealed off everything from coming in. <clears throat> and, and nobody was getting any food. They were going to starve Berlin, but they ended up every half hour fl flights were coming in with food for as long as that happened. I don't know when it is. I got there at the tail end of it when they had maybe four or five more flights coming in. So and then it was quiet after that. So about what, what year was this approximately? Do you mm. have a sense? Like 58? You know, I wish I could say, but I. That's right okay. Now. But but you, you I mean you were in from for three years from yeah. fifty four to fifty seven. Right, fifty. Uh, well, I was in for three years from fifty 
54, 5, and 6. 54, 5, and, and 6. And out for a year. year. And then that would be 58, right. 59, and 60. It's when you were in Berlin? In Berlin. Okay. Yeah. But the Berlin airlift flights stopped yes. shortly yeah. after you shortly arrived? Shortly after we got there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So that, that's it. I was there for, we were supposed to be there for two and a half years or so, but, and, and we were, you know, but we got shipped out early. And, and did you arrive there as a, as a unit or did you arrive there by yourself? Well, I was, I was still in communication, so I worked in a comp center and I did all the, all, whatever, whatever uh, you do in a comp center, I mean, in a comp center as well. Comp center, center, you say? Yeah. A communication center. Communication center. I yeah. see. Okay. And uh, did did all the traffic and all the the, the typing and everything that had right. to go out. Right. Right. Uh, and how many of you, uh, you know, I mean, was this a unit of say ten people or something or? Uh, I think we only had three. We had three. And uh, I can never remember, but I know we had tricks, you know, so many people on each trick, and we had maybe four tricks with one trick on on uh, on break all the time. Right. So if you get a two day break, sometimes you get, if you got off at seven o'clock on the sixth day, <clears throat> then you got seven and two days after that. So you'd have, uh, Seven, five, five extra hours, and then two days. Right. Now I know you can't talk about no. some of the classified stuff you did, but can you say broadly what what was the what 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 was the function of the American security of the Army Security Agency? Was it communications? Uh, I would have to say, uh, yeah, I would be a communication network. Kind of communications out, and then and yeah. then also intercepting yeah. communications. Uh, I won't verify that one way or another. Okay, I won't. I won't. I won't ask any more. Okay. So, but all this was basically hush hush. Oh yes. Kind of top oh, secret yes. work. Oh yes. <clears throat> Uh, so you did that for three more years. Yeah. You know, there, there is a time, and we got shipped out of Berlin, and I did, and so did the commander. But we got shipped out because of one man. I can tell you this: this man was a friend of mine, and he got drunk. I got him home and got him in the building <clears throat> and got him in his room and I went to my room. And then sometime during the morning hours, he got up and got on a subway and went and was taken across the border to East Germany. And when he woke up, we're assuming that the Russians had him. Hmm. But we know that he had him because Two or three weeks later, he was found on the streets in in Berlin, in our in West Berlin. West Berlin, and uh, of course, he had to go through the same thing again, finding out how many things and how much he told. What what he uh, had divulged to the right, to the Russians, whatever it was, and with that information, they knew they had to sh ship ship me out and everybody out and mm. bring people back in. Wow. From Germany. So oh, where did we, they ship you out to? The, of Frankfurt. Okay. Frankfurt. And I stayed the rest of my time in a small base and just outside of Frankfurt a little bit. Basically same doing thing. the same oh, yeah. kinds of things. The same thing. Yeah. I see. I see. Now you... Then I, then I went home and got out for another year. Okay, back to Wisconsin? Back to Wisconsin. Okay. So, whether I, I, I tried to get this figured out, I think 
My first enlistment was up in Alaska and I stayed out a year. I think I came back from Germany and I got out and became a civilian. <clears throat> but they keep calling me up on the telephone and said, when are you going to re-enlist? Huh. And Man. I had three months. So I waited and every, every month they give me a hundred dollars. Because at, at that time, mm. They give you $100 after you got discharged for three months. Oh, they did? So okay. you got $300. So I'm hoping you would come back? Right. Well, they, either that or it was to help us out okay. to get settled. Get into, know, uh, get right. into the right places. At least it gave us $100 to buy gas and stuff like that when you're running around. And uh, then I kept... I tell them, my mother kept calling me, so they called me again, they got me, and they want you to know when you're going to go and re-enlist. Tell them, don't worry about it. I mean, I don't know whether I am or not. And uh, so the, the, the end of the third month in the last week, I went to Minneapolis and they were kind of Tickled that I came, I guess. Oh, I bet they were very happy. <laughs> yeah, because they, I'm going to re-enlist. So by then you had a total of six something years, like six years of six active, year duty. active duty. Yeah. Uh, what was uh, your, do you recall what your rank was at the... I was a buck sergeant. A buck E5. 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 Buck sergeant. Okay. When you're in communications, you weren't a specialist like today. You were, you became a hard stripe. They tried to take it away from me and they found out that I had a hard stripe and it could not be taken away, what, ever. What do you mean by a hard stripe? It may, means that if you was, if I was, if I, if I got promoted to a buck sergeant because I needed to control some people or some soldiers, then, and I, I, I was, a particular MOS. Then when I went to do other things, I'd become a specialist. I, I, okay. Spec 5. But in communications, you became a buck sergeant, and it was a hard strike. They couldn't take they couldn't it away. They couldn't take it away. Okay. That's how it was. Okay. Okay. So, so... Uh, that's, that, so I became, uh, from that time on, when I became a buck sergeant and I re-enlisted, I was always in charge of troops. Always, oh, always. I went to Fort Devens for schooling that I was changing my <coughs> MOS and, uh, and ended up being in charge of 600 men going to school. Of, of, and the company commander of said- Of 600 men? Yeah, I put three in front and three in the back and and marched them with road guards and everything. Did you say 600? I said 600. Huh. That was at Fort Devens. While you were at Devens. And they were building everything up at that time. In, Dev in yeah, Fort Devens? These were in one company and the commander, uh, I think it was a captain, he, you know, he said that you're in charge of making sure that they get to school they get to eat at noon time, they get back to school, and then back to the barracks. So I marched them all the time. And Oops. I was going to school too. Were all these people, they weren't all going to the same they school? They were all, no, no, they were going to different schools. Got Fort it. Devens was, was the, uh, for all the schools. You oh, know. right. But you yeah. were still in communications. Oh yeah, I, didn't, I stayed the same all the way through. Yeah. So what, what, what was your training this time? It was just a refresher course. Refresher course? Right. Okay. Okay. So how long were you there at Devons? Well, I was, I probably was there about three years then, because after I got through the refresher course, I became an instructor. Oh. And I instructed the same thing that I was working with. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, you taught people what, what right, you knew. Right. I taught mm -hmm. people what to do. And how to run the equipment and how to keep it clean. Everything. I was in charge 
of the people that were working, had gone through prior training and then came to me to learn the equipment and how to handle it and how to work it. And this was still all part of the yeah. Army Security oh, Agency? Yeah. Yeah. I've been in, I've been, I've, I had uh, 20 years with them. Yeah. So was this a was this during a period when there was a lot of growth in the yeah there was at that time there was in a this lot of group? growth in the in, in security that. yeah in, i don't know whether it was the whole army or not but uh, it, it, within had, the your group right it, it was yeah. a growing field right and uh somewhere along the line cuba came in Picture. Cuba, Cuba. Okay, yeah, so it, this was in the early '60s. Yeah, early '60s, and I, th I think, uh, well, I was stationed at Two Rock, Rock, Two Rock Ranch, California. Oh, so this was after you left Devons. Right, uh, th that's where they assigned me, Two Rock, and it was a small military base just outside of San Francisco. Okay, and uh, a real little. And didn't have much to do there. So when the security, when uh, the, uh, Cuban, Cuban crisis came up, I had orders to go to Miami and I had a car. So the commander says, you can take your car, <clears throat> keep it on the radio, and if the Russians don't turn around and go back, and they hit Cuba, they're got, you've got to drop your car and get on the first flight and go to Miami. Hmm. And so we did, I did. And I went to Wisconsin and dropped off there, to called, called my mother and father, I says, no, I'm going to be there around 11 o'clock on Saturday. Why don't you get a picnic together and have the whole family? Because I didn't know what was going to happen in Miami. Right. So I went and stopped there for five hours. I got there at 11. All the family was there, my cousins and everything. Right. On family reunion. At a, at a reunion. And then I took off after that about four or five hours later and went south. And then I had to drop, I can't remember the state I was in. If I had a map, I could do it. But I dropped off my, I had to drop off my vehicle at this point. It was halfway between Wisconsin and Miami. And uh, I picked up a convoy of seven oh. trucks. <clears throat> and I had to pick these up, and on the way down, we got, we got, uh, I, there was an overhead, and it looked like it wasn't, our trucks would have been too high to wonder. So I stopped all of them, and I got out, and we, I looked at it, and then I seen it was okay. But well, the, the last driver, the seventh truck, come running down, and he said, I just ran in. <laughs> I it, just ran into the rear end, rear end because my brakes went. Oh, so I didn't have any brakes, and he said I hit right on the back of the truck. The uh, truck I in said, front. Okay, I said don't worry about it. We'll go up there and take a look. I had him back it up, and then there's a couple of places there where you can plug in uh, uh, for tail lights on a trailer. <laughs> and it, they're protected by a heavy metal shield. And that was bent, so I, this truck didn't have a, but the other truck that hit them had a trailer behind it. So I had to hook it up to this one because the rest of them were all full of trailers. And it didn't, and I looked around and there was construction going on on the road. And I seen a sledgehammer. <laughs> and I, I went down and I said, you guys mind if I borrow this sledgehammer for a while? He says, go ahead. And I picked it up and I asked a couple of guys if they could slam into it. And nobody knew how to run a sledgehammer. 
I picked it up and I started to hammer that thing. So, and we got it just enough so just I can straighten out. Straighten it out. And then uh, I got a spec four. I said, "You're in charge of taking this rest of these six vehicles to Miami," because he was a ranking person. And I said, you don't drive. I said, sit in the front truck and just make sure that everything's going straight. And you'll all make it. I told them all. I said, you'll all make it. No problem. But I said, I've got to take this truck without any brakes and run it to the first, <laughs> the first uh, military base that we could find so we can get brakes on it. And that... Uh, that's something that's really, really scary to do. <laughs> How far did you have to drive without brakes? I, I think it was around 30 miles. I, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 miles. And that was due west. And I knew where it was because I had the map and I just went towards it. And we got in and we were there for four or five days because all the brakes had gone on. All the wheels had to have new brakes. So once you got the brakes fixed, did you? Then I then I took off, but I had a, I had a, a private with me because I wanted I I, did, I didn't want him to drive, so I drove. But it was just to have somebody with you. Yes. You know, so you could get some help lifting things if you needed. Right. But, uh, but then I went on to uh, after we got it done and the brakes put fixed, we went on with the truck down to Miami and turn it in, and they knew where we were because the guys that got down okay and told us that we were really doing. So what happened and, when you got to Miami? Well, we all set up on the end of the runway and opened up the trucks and went to work. So these were all like communications trucks yeah, or with, with right, equipment? Right, right, right. And then they expanded out like this and it gave a, so you could walk around inside. Got it. Yeah. So this was like a like like a portable communication station. Right, right. I see. Yeah. So this was right. Uh, I I stood on the hood in Miami or in, in at the base. I forget the name of the base, but I stood on the hood and watched President Kennedy and his wife go by. Huh. And then they went to Texas and got shot. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. What a, I mean, I'm, you don't get to see a president very often. No, no. That's great. But, 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 but he was down there visiting because this Cuban was crisis after the was crisis. over with. Right, right. We did right. a good job, and he was down there visiting the post and the commander. I see, I see. So, so you got down there. <clears throat> just as the crisis was getting over? Or in other words, the Russians eventually backed down. Right? Oh yeah, they turned and went back. Right. Yeah, when I got down there. Yeah, there were so many people down there, you couldn't hardly get elbow room to walk right. around. It was, you know, everything was shoved down there to go on to Cuba, but it didn't have to. Right. And then they slowly disappeared. We were the we stayed there for a little while longer. I don't know how long. So where'd you go then? Uh, I put, oh yeah, I know where. From Miami to Shimmy, Alaska. <laughs> Back to up where to- Where it's cold. Is that in the warm. Aleutians? Is that what you said? Huh? That's all on the Aleutian Islands, yeah. It's out towards- uh, it's probably the third one before the last one. In other words, there's Shimia, and then there's two other islands, and then you hit the Straits of Russia. Wow! So you were yeah, you're going. Not, you're you going weren't that, that far way. from Russia. No, you could see, you could see the uh, Russian land when it was clear, uh -huh. and the the ocean was smooth. You could just see the faint outline of the land. 
Very so, seldom could you ever do that. Right. So this was an army base uh, on this island, no. or really no. just a communications center? No, that's it. Nothing else. Nothing else? No. Every day, they had a lot, a lot of planes, and uh, we were, they had an earthquake, and it dropped the runway. It was this deep. Dropped one of the runways like that. And then it was just a cliff. Here is a black top is here. Then you have to get up here and you're on a runway. Oh, I remember. There was a big earthquake in Alaska. Yeah. Is that what you're... Is that's what, one of the big ones. And then uh, it didn't hurt any of our equipment when we were sitting in, in our, inside of our building working. And uh, well, the guys started to run out and I grabbed him like that. And then all of a sudden we went up a foot. Huh? And then went down again. I says, you can't beat it. You can't get through the wall. No. <laughs> but everybody was... Everybody, everybody was okay. Everything was okay. Wow. Now, by... The, the, I, the storage area was a mess because they all juggled off and everything, all the tubes and everything were pretty bad shape. I think you told me earlier that at some point, you shifted from being a teletype operator to an intercept operator? Yeah. By the yeah. time you were in Alaska, was that what you... No, I was... Yeah, that would be... My first uh, part of Alaska, the first time I went up there, Yep. I was with communications. Right. And then when I went the second time, I was with the other. The intercept. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. But but still, this is all still part of. Yeah. Of ASA. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So what was it like on this lonely uh, island in the Aleutians? Well, you had uh, you had blue fox up there. You can see them <laughs> and watch them play. <laughs> yeah. And then we hit with well, after that we had huts down along the shore. And then once the earthquake hit, it wiped everything out. We didn't have anything on there. You know, the wave came in and it went on, drowned out the oh. runway lights. There were 70 feet in the air. There were real tall lights. And it hit the island and rolled over like that and, and drowned out the runway lights that come in f to see the land. Right, right. Yeah. It was a pretty big earthquake. Oh, I know. Well, I know. We we ran outside, and we were able to get at least 20 of us arm to arm in a circle. So if anything, if it opened up, we'd oh. be able to hold them up. And then we found out later that we should have stayed inside because the buildings were all cement, and oh. they were made to withstand earthquakes because they had these cement that would move. Oh, okay, you know? I, I get it. And they said, not only that, if it had been worse, all the walls would have dropped out instead of <coughs> in, because if you're inside. Oh, I see. It, so it wouldn't collapse when on you're it. outside, if they dropped off, it, too bad. Sounds like a miracle that everybody was okay. <laughs> yeah, everybody was okay, you know. But there were no, I mean, were there other, were there like Native Alaskans on this island or? No. Or, I mean, no, Native Americans? It was, they had civilians on there, I know that. But uh, they were busy doing something, I don't know. What you mean American? Uh, yeah, and then they, they had uh, flights coming in. Uh, after the runway dropped, they made a hole in it. They, Steve Reeves, I think his name was, was a pilot that keep, would bring our mail in and then anything else, uh, food or whatever. But we got, we got uh, food once a year from barges that oh. came up in the summertime and unloaded and it had enough food to last for a year and they come up again. Wow. That's how they kept <clears throat> going. But with the, with the mail, this guy would come in on his 
two engines and take an old runaway and land on it. He said, we can't leave the mail go. So he made sure that we got our got mail. Got your mail. Yeah, all the time. So how, I mean, uh, how frequently? The main, main runaway was gone, and the little runway that he used to use was gone. So right next to it was a short runway, and he'd <coughs> get what, he'd land right on that perfectly. Wow. Yeah. So how long were you there? One year. One year. I went through a lot of experiences one year. Yeah. That must have been a pretty <laughs> exciting time. Yeah. You know, I had, I had uh, probably 12, 10 to 12 people I was in charge of. And uh, that's one of them that came running up trying to beat the earthquake rubble. I stuck my hand out like that, and uh, he was at the end of the runway, <laughs> end of the building anyway. You couldn't have went very much farther. But, they just keep it quiet. We can't do nothing about this. Take a deep breath and go back to work. So were you still an E-5 at that time? I was an E-5 at the right. time, yeah. I mean, were you basically in charge of this operation or was there? No, no, I was in charge of my, these, these men. And we, we had, we worked our, our time. That's it. Right. At seven hours and then we go do whatever we want. Again. So then after you worked, did another there shift? Another shift came in. Yeah. So this was like a tw uh, round oh, the clock? Yeah, round the clock. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it, was, uh, it was interesting. So after that year, what did you do? Well, You know, it's hard to get all these 19, 19 20 years uh, together. I understand. And uh, I, I came know back. You... I came back to Fort Devens, and I came, was in charge of of what I did, and 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 the new men that were coming in, I sat out in the office. If they had a problem, come on in, talk to me. And then we'd see what we can do to fix you up, you know, and uh, whether they had family problems mm -hmm. or what they had, they would talk to me, and then I would talk to somebody else, and then we get them happy again. That's what we tried to do, you know. Kind of a counseling sort yeah, of a thing. Yeah, counseling thing. You know? I see. Yeah, I mean, you got. I had this one man that was in Shimmy, Alaska. And he came to me and he says, I don't like it here. And I know I had him setting out on with a trained person because I knew he was going to have, have trouble. And he says, I, I just I don't think I can handle it. So I said, well, there's no need of talking about this. I know that you won't be able to work if you've got this much problems. So I went to the commander and I said, you know, this guy it really needs to go back to the States if you think he could do it. And he did it. And you know, I guess he was a captain. But anyway, he, <coughs> he wrote the orders out and got them done. And this guy went to Seattle, Washington. That's what was it. And uh, there's a post there. I know I go to that post several times, but I don't remember the name of it. And I went down, I was being discharged and going home. And I went down and I was walking through the paved field and this guy came up and there he was. And I said, how are you doing? He said, I've got a job. And he said, I'm happy. Great. Felt good. Good deal. You know. So you went. So no, you were, these are the things you were doing. You this at some of this at Devons. Yeah. And then how long was that? A short time stay, or I. I just I just I just don't remember everything there. No, that's okay. No, I remember I, we we talked I, a couple. I think you said you went to Vietnam. Was Vietnam next, or was there something else? 
in between? Because we're getting pretty. Yeah, you know, that'd be in '68 and '69. Right. I met I met my oh. my wife before this, and then on the day before I was going to leave, I gave her a ring and said, "Leave for Vietnam." Yeah, but put it in put it in your drawer. Don't tell anybody. And when I get back, we'll talk about this. And uh, I said, I'm leaving tomorrow. For uh, Vietnam. Yeah. But what we did, we had small video tapes. I would make audio, ta ta uh, audio tapes. I would take and talk to my, my girlfriend. Right. And she would talk to me. And this is what brought us closer together because any time... We wanted to hear her voice. All I had to do was put a tape right. on. Right, that's great. You know, that's great. And she, we both said it was probably the tapes that kept us together. Wow. After being gone a year. Wow. And that's then. Uh, so 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 this was in. So sixty eight. Sixty that'd sixty eight. Be, you you know, went to Vietnam. I went to Vietnam. And this was again as part of one of these communication units. Oh, it was the same thing all the time. Okay. You know, so did you go anywhere with with, with, yeah. with a unit, or did you go by yourself? Oh, I went by myself to join up with. And then I, because they had everything set up. We had everything set up in the 25th Infantry Division. 25th. Yeah, out of Hawaii. Out, uh, out of Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. That was the 25th Infantry Division is stationed in Hawaii. Oh, but they were they in Vietnam. They got orders to go to Vietnam. They Viet all went. And I, I went later. Right. And uh, it was General Black was the assistant commander, second in command. Of I don't the, know what the name of the commander was. But he worked with us. And I, he asked me one night, one night, he says, you want to go up and see the battle? Hmm. And I got into his helicopter and we went up. Oh. And we could see tracers going back. This is probably around 11, 12 o'clock at night. At night? At night. And we see tracers going both ways. Where, and where in Vietnam were and you? That was out, right outside of Saigon, or Kuchi. And Ku, uh, how, and is, is that C in the... C-U-C-U, Kuchi. Right. And is that in the south? That's close to Saigon? Yes, it's close. It's probably 30, 40 miles because I used to take a Jeep and drive the, after 9 o'clock. That's when they clear the road yes. of bombs if yes. there was any on it. And then I would take a Jeep to down to Saigon and somebody be there waiting for me to take whatever I had and uh, like you mean, disappear. You mean, you mean messages? You probably I don't know myself or whatever it was. So whatever it was, I but was, you had I to, was delivering it. You, know. you had to deliver it in person. Right, right. I see. At that time, it took an E seven, and I was an E seven. Oh, you were by that yeah. time you had been promoted up to uh, right E seven, which is and what what what's what's it called or what's the what's the rank called? The is what? it master sergeant or master, well, that mine I was master sergeant. Or master or E E seven, okay. At the time, I didn't make master sergeant until I come back to Fort Devens. Okay. <clears throat> so I was an E seven, and that took an E seven to handle the material that we had. The secure. So I don't know what it was. There it was, and I took it, and I go out to first platoon, which was on a river, and the helicopter would land on a square piece of. A landing and stay there and I'd run in, grab a box and come back out, jump in, he'd take off. And then you'd take that back to take that back to headquarters. To in, Saigon. In Saigon, yeah. I and there was somebody there. Every time we landed, I had a little box they ran Somebody out. was there to take it off right. of your hands. I didn't have to get out of the helicopter. Oh you didn't? So then you went back to Kuchi? Yeah. Oh yeah, well, I went back to Kuchi and I'd get off and he'd go drop flying somewhere. So you spent a lot of time on a helicopter? Oh yeah, I, I even spent some time on, I think it was a Piper Cub. 
Piper Cub. Uh, there was a lieutenant colonel that had his plane shipped over. Huh. And he wanted to fly it, so we fixed it up so he could fly it. His own, what, uh, a personal plane? Personal plane. And I was up there a couple of days. Look, I could see, I've, I've, I've seen the bombs where they drop. I mean, huge craters that I couldn't believe. Right. In the middle of the forest, <laughs> white, huge bombed out. Hmm. And wow. I can imagine if there is anybody close at all, a concussion would have killed them anyway. Right. Wow. But I see, I see, I seen that with my own eyes, up in the air. And <laughs> he's saying, you know, we can get shot at any time. But you managed to no, somehow. No, we never, you, never did. You never, never got, got shot at. No, I don't think we got that close to the, to the border. But we've seen more of them drop the bombs. We want to over. But in Coochie, uh, I mean, was the Viet Cong? Uh, well, they were active. They, they hit us one night. They, they killed two dock guards by cutting their throat. And then they got in and got into our hill, uh, Chinook helicopters mm -hmm. and just about ruined every, every one of them they had. All of a sudden, bombs started to go off and I had a, my helmet on. I thank God that, I, that he told me to put it on that night. <clears throat> Shrapnel hit me here and went into the dirt on this side. Really? And it was on my helmet, it went click. And I picked it up hot, yeah, and I found it. I, I lost it. I wish I didn't. I could frame that piece. Right, wow. But anyway, that, that, that happened when they got on post, and all these helicopters that did all their work was gone. I have a picture of one, and all you can see is the two propellers. The rest of them are just nothing. Hmm. Melded, melded mandel, all in one piece. Wow. They had, they were in there for a long time because they put a lot, of, a lot of bombs on all of these. I don't know whether it was how many it was or anything, but whatever was there was gone. And this was the base at Kuchi. This was the main base at Kuchi, and then that time, right after that. With it, that night, they had us going looking in our wall lockers, <coughs> foot lockers, under the bed, because they're such small people, they can hide that easily. Oh, okay. You know, they're, they're small and they can get into a wall locker. Right. You know, so they, they just said, go ahead and just look. And then we did, nothing happened. We had one rocket, rockets are good, I hate them, but the the good thing about it is, is that just before they explode, they whistle. They whistle. Remember? I do. Yeah. Well, this one here came in, whistled, and I was under the bunk when I when I finally realized what had happened. It blew up and took care of one of our jeeps and a uh, one of these small pickup trucks. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, Shrapnel came across. We had, if I was standing up, I wouldn't be here today. And that's because you heard the whistle? I heard the whistle and jump. You got automatic. I don't know how I got under the bed. But when I regained whatever I thought, I was under the bed, all crumpled up in the middle of the corner. <laughs> had you been asleep before that, or were you standing? No, uh, I was standing before that. You no, know, we were just, that was something that I've, uh, you know, I, I thank God for our, we were supposed to have a, where, where it hit was where we had our formation. We all overslept that morning, including the commander. Otherwise, we would have been all standing outside in formation, because it was that night was around. So, I see. And we overslept. 
Why did we oversleep? Why did the whole company oversleep? And it, it just happened? I mean, there were... That just happened, you know. That's a, everybody, you know. The people that were working. I went in there and I said, I, everybody everybody was okay. But one guy says, look at here. Shrapnel come right by and clicked off his headset wire and hit the radio. Wow. Just missed him. He was right, right here and it took. So basically everybody was okay? But everybody was okay. There was nobody nobody hurt during that particular the thing. The Jeep and the five, five quarter ton truck or whatever, one of the smaller trucks. So Co Coochie was a big base, right? Yes, uh, Coochie was a big and base. And your communications activity yeah. was a, right. probably a relatively small part yeah. of that whole yeah. thing. Wow, wow. So you were, uh, yeah. were you in Vietnam for a year? One year, yeah. So you left and came? I came back to... So that must have been 69 yeah. sometime. Yeah, well, I had to be there. How many years have that been now? Hmm? It's really, really, uh, I really don't know where I went to. I think I probably went back to Fort Douglas. Did you go to G Germany? I remember one point you said you... Well, yeah, my wife and I, after that, went to Germany. And to think about it, I think that's where, I think, see, we got married. See, when I got back from Vietnam in 1969, that would be in August. September, October, November, December 27th, we got married of 69. And I think we were married a year and I got orders to go to Germany, uh, Nuremberg. Nuremberg? Yeah, they had, a, they had a post outside of Nuremberg in a cornfield. Big, 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 big place. Was this a big base? No. Or a small mm, communicate. Uh, small, small place, yeah. And uh, we, we got, we got, we got in the, we got there. And then uh, we were in the ho hotel. And we stayed there, they stayed there. I went to work. I didn't have a car or anything. That was up in another state where I had to drop it off and come down with a convoy. Yes. And we had the flat yep, yep. tire. Oh, that that's where your car was? Yeah, that's where we had the uh, the brake, brake problem. Yep, yep. Well, now, that was, well, that was before I got married. So right. This, now me and I are together at this hotel room with no car because we had to leave it in, in uh, whatever state it was. The middle of the country. Yeah. Anyway, we, oh no, it was coming over by, by ship and it wasn't there yet in Frankfurt. Okay. So it took another week or two before it got but there. But your car eventually got there. Oh yeah, eventually got there and then I was able to drive to work. And by now you were an E8? Or oh e yeah, I was, I, I was, no, I, was think, I think I was still an E7 but I made E8 before I left there. So I was there for th almost three years. And then we had a, had a, oh, they set me up for a first sergeant at one of the outposts. And I finally got to something that I couldn't quite handle. So I, I had a, I had a, um, they, they released me from, and put somebody else in my place and May and I just walked around. I said, well, she said, you're going to be all right. I said, well, we've only got two more years. And then I, did, I came back to Fort Evans, and I had a job here that I could handle. But the first sergeant job wasn't, wasn't what I could handle, especially on an outpost like that. You mean, and that was in Germany? That was in Germany. Okay. Yeah. And that's, uh, 
I was getting close to retirement then. I was getting down to two, two years, year and a half. Right. Like that. Right. And uh, we, they gave me early leave instead of staying there three years. I stayed there two years. Two years because, in Germany. Because of my health. Your health. Okay. Yeah. And uh, May and I came back here, and I was at Fort Devens for the next year. Okay, and you were you instructing again? Uh, I was I was no I was working for for a civilian then, and had a desk outside his office along with his secretary, and took care of all the military stuff that he that he couldn't take care right. of. Right, you know that's that's all. I was talking to people, going out and talking to men that were having a problem. And yes. so forth and so on, just like that, until I retired. Right. So then you, uh, so Fort Devens was your last? Fort Devens was my last duty station. Duty station, yeah. Right. Wow. And so your total time uh, in service was 20 years? 20 years. I, my retirement time is. 20, 22 years. 20, yeah, okay. because all of those times that I took off right. go for your retirement. Oh, they do? Yes. Even that year that I took away, they gave me the year and then I had three of those three months period. Right. And then something else gave me two years. Oh, so they add the, all that together? They add it in 30, 22 years retirement. Oh, well, that's nice. Instead of 20. Great. So by then it was uh, something like 1977? Uh, something like that, yeah. Okay. 76, 77. And where did you, uh, so you were married? Oh yeah, we were uh, married and we knew that we were going to be shipped overseas again. So we were staying in, uh, in a three-decker uh -huh. and I came rushing out and was going down in the car and if you take the inside it doesn't have steps. Well, I took the inside and grabbed onto that post, and I missed all the steps. And oh. I landed on the on the banister down below, across it like this. Oh! Didn't hurt anything. Oh! May said, "Are you okay?" I said, "I'm all right." She said, "Well, we're going to buy a house." <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went I went down Fourth Street, and here's a for sale sign that's pinned to a house. So when I come back from work, I told him, why don't you go over tomorrow and find out what the, what's for sale? Maybe the house is for sale or maybe something else. And when I got back that night, she said the house is for sale and they want to see us right away. Wow. And we bought it. I'm, I, I missed, what, what town was, where was this? This was in Lemister. Lemister. Yeah. She, she was, uh, all of her family's from, lives in Le Lemonster. Oh, and okay. I met her at a dance hall in Littleton. And her name was Ida May? Ida May Bob. Yeah, well, Ida May Turbide at the time. Okay. Yeah. So they were Lemonster folks. Yeah, they were all Lemonster folks. I was, I was the one that... You were the outlier from <laughs> yeah, Wisconsin. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, but we we uh, we went together for a year, and then I, I said I had to go to Vietnam. Right. So I came back. Yeah. You know, she had a ring, but we didn't tell anybody, and uh, we gave her an engagement ring the night before I left. And then I came back, and we we we. We went and found out when we could get married and see what date was open and the 27th was open. So we- You took it? Took it. What was that, a justice of the I peace? Mean, or we, had, we, we had already talked to each other for, for a whole year right, by you, tapes. Right, you exchanged the So years we got to know right. each other real good. And then there was no doubt about it and neither one of them was mine. Right. So we, we, were, we were gonna be together for 45 years. Forty-five years. Yes. I'm that. That's. I'm trying to figure out how long, but I think it was forty-five years. Forty. Right. 
So she's she passed away. Yes. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Now about six years ago. Six years ago. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Did did you have children? No, we didn't. No, we were. Uh, we both talked about it, and then we we were thinking about uh, adopting. Mm-hmm. And we talked about it, but we decided that we're just going to be us. And we went dancing every night. You did. We went dancing. She was a terrific dancer. She huh. taught. She taught Arthur Murray. Oh. In Fort in in uh, in the USO at at uh, Air did outside she? of Fort Devens. Really? She she did. She knew a lot of the military people because they came down there to get her lessons. <laughs> to get her. And, she, and I, I knew how to dance when I got there, but not as good as she did. Wow. <laughs> so you guys were great dancers. Oh, yeah. We enjoyed the, the waltz of the, the two step and the polka. So when you I, say you danced every night, I mean, are you serious? Well, I'm serious. Every, every Saturday, uh, Wednesday or Saturday night, we were dancing until I couldn't dance anymore. I'm the one that had to stop. I see. Because my left hip started to bother me, and I couldn't, I couldn't pull it back. Right. To back. I see. So uh, she said, uh, the night this happened, we were at a wedding in Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And May asked me, he says, you want to dance? I said, I can't. Hmm. He said, well, you can try. So I tried, but I couldn't. I just wanted to scream. That's all I wanted. <laughs> a lot of pain. I tell, you, I tell you, that was a pretty sad moment for both of us. Well, I'm sure yeah. it was. Yeah, I'm sure it and was. And she taught me many, many steps. Huh? So yeah. did did she continue as a dance instructor? Oh no, we both quit at the same time. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, after, oh no, no. I mean, was as she as soon as I don't know. When I, when I came back from Vietnam, no, before we went to Vietnam, USO closed. So there was no more dancing. Doing, no. Okay. So uh, did, did you live in Lemonster for a long time? Uh, we, bought, uh, we, got, we bought our house there and uh, we lived, after I retired, we bought our house and lived there for until I come up here. Okay, wow. And I about it wasn't in the house because it, it uh, we both went to uh, a, a home for the elderly. Yes. Up on, uh, it was a motel at one time. And uh, that's where, uh, we stayed in a, in a little one room, mm -hmm. and then they had a big dining room where we could eat. Right. And uh, we paid somewhat, but I don't know what it was, no. But there we stayed there that long until she got sick, and uh, she was in the nursing home when she died. I, I was see. there with her. I see, I see. Yeah. And, and then sometime after that, you came here. Yeah, right after that. Right uh, after that. Yeah, yeah. It was, I had no place to go. And uh, the nurse, uh, Nurse Hall, H-U-L-L, -L, got knew what was happening and she got me a reservation here. She came up here and put me on the list. And by the time I needed this place, it was ready for me. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. So I'm glad for that because I'm happier. Good. Yep. Good. I really am. That's wonderful. Yep. I don't mind who knows what either. <laughs> I've told the bosses here already that I'm here to stay for life. That's it. So uh, did, did you, once you retired, I mean, you were done. You, oh, you, yeah, you didn't stay done. in the reserves or anything like that? No, I went to work for the church, St. Cecilia's Church in Lemister. For the church? Yeah, so I, it was over the wintertime. It was in December. And uh, Gladys 
my sister-in-law, Gladys, worked for the church. She, was, she did something in the kitchen and did some cleaning and stuff like that. Anyway, she was there and she heard that the person who was working got mad, threw the keys at Father Denemy and walked out and says, I quit. Mm. And as he was walking out, I guess Gladys was running my way to where we lived on the other side of the church on 4th Street. Uh -huh. And she comes and says, go on over and see if you can get that job. They, the guy quit. The oh, guy I quit. Know. So I went over and I see Father Denemy and there was another priest there that was out on the hallway and I says, you know, I hear you, a guy quit. And I says, I'm here to uh, volunteer for your job. I mean, if that's possible. And then I can't think of his name, but I will. Anyway, he said, well, we'll go talk to Father. And I said, well, you know, you let him know that I was a farmer. And a farm boy does everything. <laughs> they drive tractors, <coughs> they drive cars, uh, they run horses, whatever you want. They do something or have that experience. Right. And he went in there and he said, okay. He said, it was, it was, everything was fine. I went to work part time. And Father Denemy took me around and talked to me. And uh, I said, you won't be sorry. Well, I knew what I could do. And I can do anything that they can give me there. So is this basically working around the, tr um, like maintenance and yeah, well, that you, sort of thing? Washing. We had a schoolhouse and we had a hallway. We had to clean those. Right. And right. then we had lawns to mow. We had a big cemetery right. to take care of. And we had, uh, uh, wintertime we had the snow. And snow I said, removal. When I got, when I got married, I well, was married in the church on the 27th of December. Because of a big snowstorm, I had oh, to crawl oh, over. Right. I had to crawl over a four four foot snowbank to get in the church, and I said that'll never happen if I get to work here, and it didn't. So you took care of the snow too. Yeah, I took care of that. If it quit snowing at two o'clock in the morning, I was out with a snowblower on the sidewalks getting them clean, and eventually, right away, uh, Emery who work with me, did the same thing. He'd, bring it, he'd go, come over at two o'clock, hop in the truck, and do the roads in the driveway and the parking lots. So that's the way it happened every winter. Every winter. From that yeah. time on, it was, it, nobody ever climbed a snowbank to get into the church to get married. And the, my wife had to be carried across the street because of slush like this. And on your we, wedding, for your wedding. On our wedding, you know. And we just got back from, uh, we pulled in from uh, Boston, and I dropped her off at 2 o'clock in the morning, the day we were supposed to get married at 10. Wow. And she maybe got a couple, maybe she didn't even get any sleep. Right. I don't know. I went to sleep for a couple of hours, and then I had to get up, and I had my uniform on, so. The only thing I didn't get is get a shave. <laughs> you could see that. <laughs> wow, wow. We got, okay. uh, we had a party. This is a st good story. But we had a party for May and I at uh, her cousin's. And that was the night before. The wedding? Yeah, night before the wedding. At 11 o'clock I took May home and I, was opening the door and the telephone was ringing. And she picked it up and says, it's your mother and father, they're in Boston, waiting for us to pick them up. Huh. That's at 11 o'clock, the day before we got married. We, May and I hopped in my, <laughs> my Plymouth and we went to Boston, picked up my sister and her husband and my mother and father, father. and came back in the snow. In the snow. 
some places were full of water because it rained too, and the the car would fishtail, float oh, across yeah. some a couple of those big hills that go like this, right. and then the snow was plugged the culvert, and uh, we got up on that corner by Fort Devons. Yes, it's on a hill. Yeah, and we ran out of gas. Oh. We ran out of gas. What a story, huh? We ran out. And I said, we got to do something. And, uh, the, you know, you go by Fort Devons and then you come to, the, to Howard Johnson's. Mm -hmm. Well, I started to walk there because I had to get gas. And I, I probably hadn't taken 10 steps and a Jeep pulled up, stopped. And it, uh, he says, I know who you are. He says, I've got five gallons of gas for you. I don't know how you knew I had needed My God. But he did. He put it in, and he says, that's your wedding present, and took off. Huh. I said, well, thank you. And I said, I told him. I said, I didn't even get a chance to thank him. <laughs> but he did. And then we went down the road, and instead of stopping, we got to talking and knowing we were getting late. And we went right by the gas station. <laughs> I let May off. It was probably around two in the morning. And then I took and went up to the motel on the other side of town. And I had reservations there already for uh, three rooms. For your parents and for your For my parents, brother, my sister, and sister. her husband, and myself. <laughs> and then we got up. And here I am, I'm shaved. I said, Dad, you got a razor? He said, yeah. And he handed me his little razor, you know. I went there, and it was dull. I couldn't shave. I said, you got any any, sh uh, any blades? And he says, no. He said, I forgot to bring them. Oh, that, that's my story. It's a great story. Great story. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So. You had a great career in the military. Yes. Uh, I wish I knew all the all the ribbons I've got, but I can't. I can't tell you right now. Can you think of a? I mean, you've told us some stories as you've gone along, but as you think back on it all, can you think of a particularly memorable experience or character or person or something that you'd? I have. Probably the best uh, assignment I had, I don't have to say Berlin, but the story is Miami. Miami, I got down there. When I finally got my car down there, I bought a boat. A what? A boat. Boat? Oh, a yeah, boat. with a 35-horse engine on it, and it was, a, it was a skiing boat for skiing. Water skiing. So my trick. The one people that worked for me, I would invite them out to the pond or wherever we were, and their wives would come, the family would come, and we'd sit there and have a picnic and water ski. I had good working people. They, might, they must have. Oh yeah, that was really good. They were coming out, had them go fishing with me, and uh, whatever, but that was the time where I didn't have a worry in the world with men. Right. We, we knew what we had to do. We were doing it, yet we were going out and having a good time. But you were able together, to Together, you know. Right. Here I am, a, a, probably an E7 at the time, maybe E6. And uh, we were going out together. You know, I, I'm the boss, but we're all one family. And you're all having fun together. And we're all having fun together. That's and great. we're working our butt off too. I bet you yeah. were. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, we're getting close to the end here of the interview. Uh, you know, as you think about your family, uh, you know, I think you said you have a niece. Uh, I have a niece that's in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. She came out and visited twice, which is good. But she's a truck driver. A truck driver? Yeah, her and her friend, her truck, they have the same truck. Huh. So she drives when he's sleeping and he drives when she's sleeping. 
So when they come with the load here, they oh, park no, the no. truck. They and park the truck uh, wherever they can. They walk up I see. and visit with me oh. for a couple of hours. That's great. Well, as you know, this is this interview is being recorded. So before we finish, is there anything else? of any kind that you'd like to say or message for your niece or anything or if well, we're I, done we're done i just told my niece all over that's enough that's great that's great well thank uh, you very much i would just like to say uh, thank you uh, arnold bop uh, for your participation in this program it's been a great interview thank you my my great thank pleasure you. it's been a pleasure for me too good Good. Super.